All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's now seven o'clock. We'll call us to meeting to order. If you'd all rise, please, and we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everyone for coming tonight. For the record, we have Council Member Limley, Owen, Lee, and Kinzer here, Mayor Wagner, Council Member Sandstrom, Council Member Johnson, and Council Member Cornegay are not here, as well as City Supervisor Burke. Our first item on the agenda tonight is going to be the consent calendar. Council knows the drill on this. If there's anything you want to pull or discuss, please let me know. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion to approve consent calendar items A through F. So moved. Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion we adopt consent calendar items A through F. Okay. Way too formal. Yeah. <laughs> Already spent that. Okay, we I have a second. It. <laughs> we have a motion to adopt consent calendar agenda items A through F. Was there second by uh, Rick Lindley. Second by Judith Lee. Um, so point of order. That's done Lee. It's official Judith last Dunn name. Lee. And so consent calendar is passed. I don't know what happened. We now come to the public comment time. Anyone is invited to come up and share with you here, dude. Make a public comment on any matters that you may not speak on, or matters scheduled for public hearing, or quasi judicial matters. What are you going to do? If you come up to speak, please speak your state your name and address clearly and limit your comment to three minutes, please. And at this time, I'll open the public comment here. Okay. Good evening. My name is Steve McCart, 815 Evans Drive, Cedar Rally, Washington. Um, I am the cinematography photography teacher at Cedar Rally High School. And the reason I'm talking to you tonight is I, I want to eventually get on the official agenda, but I uh, couldn't get on there soon enough tonight. Um, every year we do a thing called a lip dub, and I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but what the lip dub is, we take a popular song and we film one take and we go through the high school and the kids lip sing along to that and we enter contests and things like that. This year, this will be our seventh year. We started in 2010, and two years ago, we were featured on King 5 News. We were, you know, they, they said, we'd love to make us happy, but Cedar really High School really made us happy, and so we were on the evening news, and we were on the website, and that sort of thing. And last year, we had a uh, Cedar Rally alumna, alum, Ryan Haug. I don't know if you guys know Ryan, but Ryan graduated in 2002, and he and I have kept in close contact. He works for, uh, owns a professional company that shoots a lot of high, high end stuff like he did the Russell Wilson um, visiting children's last year on, for CNBC and he's filmed uh, a lot of uh, videos for um, some bands like one of his uh, one he traveled around with Macklemore the rap artist from Seattle and he made two of his videos and um, also went on tour and filmed him and that sort of thing so he helped us last year so it's kind of become a big deal this year we want to do something really different and what we want to do is we want to perform our lip dub downtown Cedar Woolley uh, Macklemore has a song called Downtown. We got the clean version, and um, <laughs> and uh, so we would like to do that. And I know we, we usually film uh, around the Friday before uh, spring break, which is April first this year. So it's not a joke. I'm just in case you're worried. Um, and I've already uh, talked to uh, Chief Tucker because I figured if anybody would have an issue with it, it would be the police department. So uh, and he seemed very excited about it. I sent all of you an email that you. Made off got it because I just sent it today, and but I did get a reply back from uh, Mayor Wagner, and he said he's he's all for it and that sort of thing. So what I want to do is put myself on the agenda two weeks from now on the tenth. I don't know if you guys are meeting that day or not. Sometimes you skip a day, and I'll have some of my students come down and do that. So I just wanted to give you a heads up today to let you know that we're thinking about doing that. So if you have any issues with that or you might think of questions you have and that sort of thing, um, a lot of the questions won't be answered. Or could. 
because you know we've only done it at the school before. But I think it'd be a really cool thing to feature our town, and maybe we'll get on King Five News again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my name's uh, Dr. Neil Shihara, 801 McLean Drive. <clears throat> This is concerning the library and the article this morning in today's paper. Uh, I don't agree with the mayor's proposal for the new library, and I hope the city council will not support giving away city assets to a county entity. The mayor is not entrusted by the city ordinances to manage and control the city's library assets. Now I'd like to ask the council, where does the three million dollars come from in the mayor's proposal? And does this mean, or does this lead to a tax increase as stated in the newspaper? The original proposition in November 2012 stated the central Skagit library would be in the unincorporated area of the school district. If that has changed, the voters should be asked again by ballot. The mayor and the city should have another work session on RCW 4230, Open Public Meetings Act, since it doesn't look like the spirit of transparency was followed concerning the library. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Judith Meadows. I live at 8642 Western Road, Cedar Woolly, Washington. The really good news tonight is that I'm not going to ask each of you if you're a virgin. <laughs> the bad news is I am going to ask you why in 30 days' time that shattered wall at our public library has not been fixed. And I want an answer, and I want an answer tonight. I'll attempt to answer that for you. Um, the damage to the library was um, severe enough that we had to engage a structural engineer to analyze the uh, condition of the building itself. Uh, we've been waiting on that report up to this point. Uh, once we have that report, we'll finish our negotiations with the insurance company who is going to pay for the repairs. Uh, there is also an issue uh, involving uh, building code. Uh, when a, an older structure like that is damaged and has to be repaired, typically you have to upgrade it to the newest standards. It means the city may have to put in a, uh, a new um, ADA accessible automated push button door there as well. So it's just not something that can be do, done quickly. And there is insurance involved and so we can't really jump across, uh, ahead of that process. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I want to say as a citizen, I have a lot of construction experience. I could have that wall fixed in 30 days. But what's the problem with the picture here? Because the answer that you give tonight is critical to the whole thing. What is each one of you going to say about why that library wall is still shattered? This gentleman has been kind enough to give the professional answer, but what is your answer? basically what he explains to you. Unfortunately, progress moves slow, even though you hope it will be expedited when you can. But like I say, when there's insurances and current codes that not, might have to be uh, abided by and, and things with that, yeah, you just can't go in and restructure and you don't want to come back, you know, get a temporary fix up there and then come back and, and have to redo it again at additional expense. So... Thank you. Anybody else care to answer that? Because you're being asked. We are bound, ma'am, by laws and building codes, and we do have to follow, follow the policies of the insurance companies in order to receive proper insurance payout for that. We are bound by following all proper rules in this matter. I thank you for answering that, because that's exactly the answer that is about this library that this gentleman that preceded me brought up. Okay, the laws are not being followed. 
And with regards to our shattered library wall, you're all very willing to say, well, that's the proper protocol. Well, there is a proper protocol for this library district and the way things are handled within the city. And there's a spirit of deception hanging over this thing and a, a whole sense of slipping things in, unannounced, unclear, putting things out in the public. And I want to ask you, okay, that is not going through proper protocol and every one of you have given the answer to why your old library can't be fixed. But you're about to, you're about to rubber stamp some sort of, you know, plan that's bypassing all of the laws. Are you, are you thinking that we're not doing this because we're waiting to see what might happen with the other library board? I'm saying, that, or? I'm saying that your own mayor has put a proposition out on the on the front of the on the front of the the local newspaper that everybody is reading and has been talking about it, and it's going out as if it is a done deal. No. Okay, <clears throat> but why you? Tell me why is that going on the on the front of the why is that going on the front of the Skagit Valley Herald going out and creating creating a a false picture of what's going on in Cedro Woolley? I think Mr. Wagner is trying to come up with an amicable solution for all parties and involved, and unfortunately, that is going to take some time to do that. Well, I suggest not putting things out in the public newspaper when you're in the, you know, why don't I go out there and talk about the ways that we're going to fix as a citizens, we're going to fix that library well. Well, everybody and their brother would be coming after me about codes, but you guys aren't going after that as far as the codes. You're allowing that to go out there in the public, and if you're not allowing it, then it's being done without your consultation. And I would like to say every one of you is accountable before God for what you rubber stamp and what you do and there's people out here that are being swayed by these kind of things. And I really encourage you to go back and call this stuff on the carpet. Those things, we will. Those we things will create... We will have a public meeting on the subject when the time comes. <clears throat> yes, and that's, an, that's, another, that's another point is that it's put out that there was supposed to be that tonight. You know, half your people are missing, and it's put in as a late agenda. This is the kind of... The tonight is not a public meeting. Tonight is not a public... It is, excuse me, it is a public meeting. It is not out for public comment in that fashion. Well, it's on the Internet as late materials added, and what I'm saying is that these communications are unclear, they're covert, they're deceptive, they lead people to think, you know, we come tonight because this is happening, and you come and you say, no, it's not happening. And well, that's it's not a hearing. Tonight is not a public hearing. Well, I'm saying you're not making it clear in your communications, and you're not giving people, you're not giving people concrete, tangible things that, you know, if you say you're having a hearing tonight, then have it clear, have it advertised, have it say this is about We're not having a hearing tonight. We're not having a hearing. It is not a public well, hearing. Well, why is it on the internet as late materials added to this meeting? It's not added as a hearing. It's information. This is just something that Mr. Wagner has been working on in the last little bit. He wanted to get us that information so we can kind of see what he's trying to amicably work between the, the Skagit County Library Board and, and ours. Nothing is progressing farther than just trying to get a floor plan to get people to come together to talk about it. Well, I'll be, I'll be nothing really is just... being done or progressed or any of that. I'd be willing to bet that if you asked a thousand people out there what their impression was from that article, okay? They might think it's a done deal. It's not a no. done deal. Well, you guys aren't coming up front and, you know, when some Lone Ranger gets out there and starts putting something out in the public like that and you guys say it's not a done deal, they're just going out and airing their laundry out in public? And okay, I, we appreciate your my, comments, but we have to keep I'm a three-minute time limit. I didn't read the article in today's paper, so I don't know what they said in that. Did you, did you get a copy of this? Yes, sir, okay. I did. Yeah. Is it pretty much formatted the same? 
Well, I suggest, I suggest, Mr. Lemley, that you get a copy of the newspaper and look at it. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop. I encourage you to um, not be putting things out. If the mayor is a runaway uh, going out there doing all of this stuff and you guys aren't involved, well, then I would say there's an accountability problem. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else for public comment? Well, my name is Pat Hammond, 729 Sock Mountain Drive, Cedar Woolen. And I am in full agreement with Judith. The article in tonight's paper evidently is very misleading, but it, the way it's written, it says we're going to be under, our library is going to be under the uh, leadership of uh, Central Skagit Library. I don't believe in that. We have a fantastic local library, and I want us to support it fully. Totally, it uh, the people that the women that work there are so good, helpful on any question you go in with. They are there to help us. I want that to stay. It's very very important for this community. They have a fantastic children's program uh, that is very, very beneficial to our young people. So let's please take this full, fully in, and look at all sides and stay with Cedar Woolley Library. Thank you. Thank you. On this thing that Mr. Wagner has proposed, it does say in item number four, existing city staff will be hired uh, by the library board. So, to what capacity and things we don't know yet. We can't get them to really come to the board. So, you know, to I want to remind everyone that public comment time is not a time for debate or cross examination. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Mary Anderson. I reside at 928 Beachley Road here in Cedar Woolley. I have lived here for approximately 26 years and I joined the library within two months of moving here because even though I had children, two children under the age of three and it was winter time because libraries are important to me. I would like to express my concern tonight regarding the city council late materials. Um, the first thing I would like to ask is why was such, a, such a, a proposal made before allowing residents to comment on it? The next thing I would like to question is the tenor of, uh, of it. The whole tone seems to be implying that um, Cedar Woolley will offer everything to this other entity and it's not clear what Cedar Woolley will receive in return. Um, the collection uh, that Cedar Woolley contains now is approximately 60,000 materials. Uh, if you even value that at the low estimate of $10 per item, uh, we're talking uh, over half a million dollars worth of city assets that are being, in this document, uh, handed over to a county entity. I'm very concerned with that. I'm very concerned that this county entity is not answerable to anyone, not even their own constituents, since they are a self-perpetuating board. And I'm very concerned that the city would have no voice in how the collection was handled, or how it will be maintained, or even if it will be maintained, since uh, an advisory council, which is mentioned in here, would have no authority over the governing body. I'm very concerned about the mixing of tax dollars between the city and the county. Handing over city assets to a county entity uh, does not seem quite right to me. Um, I am not opposed to a collaboration between the two uh, entities, uh, but I would request transparency going forward uh, on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you.
My name's Jim Johnson. I live at 587 Carter Street. I too would like to speak to the library issue, that I will, but I will promise you I won't be as articulate as any of the preceding speakers. Uh, but I share their concerns. I can't help but feel that it hasn't yet been an open process, that we, we look at something that looks like a final proposal. I don't know the extent that you've debated it. It's been discussed internally. I wonder if any, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but I wonder if some open meeting laws haven't already broke, been broken early on in the process. I am very much a supporter of our library. As has been said, we have a wonderful children's program. Uh, the previous speaker, Mary Anderson, provides a book cook evening approximately once a, a month, or perhaps not that often, which is a wonderful event. I don't know if it has its equal anywhere in the state, certainly not in the county to my knowledge. Uh, this year, Carol Bombach started a children's garden, uh, took it on herself out back of the library. Uh, got off to a small start, but small starts turn into bigger programs. So these are the kind of things that are going on. Uh, as a Cedar Woolley resident, I didn't have a chance to vote on the library district. But I did see our library staff urging their patrons to vote if they were outside the city limits. And now it sounds as though the collection, if not the building, will be handed over uh, to this existing group to do as they see fit. Uh, some of my tax dollars bought a few of those books, as well as maintained the building. So I don't feel, uh, perhaps to echo a phrase that I uh, heard maybe in the fifth or sixth grade, taxation without representation, it seems to come back to me. I think that's going on. Um, I just think we have a wonderful library here. I'm suspicious of the process. And uh, I hope the council has a thorough discussion. I hope public hearings are well advertised and so that we can get a satisfactory resolution to what so looks so far like a very dodgy, shaky process. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for a public comment? Yes. I'm Barb Blair. Um, you need my address, right? Yes, please. First time here at this council meeting, so it's kind of exciting. 816 Central. Cedar Woolley. Number one, is there a copy of this library thing? Because there's only two out on the table. Is this, which one is it? That's. Can you, I? Do you need one of those? You can have that one. Okay, thank you. If you need more than one, there's another one right here. My question is, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I'm seventeen. There wasn't one out there for me to pick up and look at. So how many were printed for this meeting is my question. I'm not sure. Well, sixteen for the public to pick up? I I don't uh, know the answer to that question. Well who would have printed it? City staff. Okay, so I walked you, in you, on Patsy, number you know? 17. Patsy, do you know? Um, I don't exactly know how many were printed this evening. Um, well, we just... have quite a few more attendees this evening than a normal meeting. Normally we have two, three, maybe five. So okay. I apologize that there were not enough copies I'm just for saying, in everyone. So I don't, every, you guys are talking about, I know what you're talking about, and there wasn't enough for me to pick up one of these to even know what you're talking about. Apologies. So to me that's, you know, withholding information for someone walking in right now, even though that's not the normalcy. So that's all I had to say. All right, thank you. May I have this? Yes, thank Apologies you. for not having enough copies tonight. Is there a way to get copies of this? Absolutely, and it's also available on the internet right now. 
but we can give we can have copies available at town city hall if you would like we can have copies available at city hall if you'd like and we do have some extra copies here you can have our copies we can do that can't we patsy or we can go make copies right now that would be great <laughs> thank you patsy Is there anyone else that would like to make a public comment tonight? Step one to get people. Okay, well at this time then I'll close the public hearing comment period. And we'll go on to agenda item number five. Possible adoption by resolution of amendment, resolution 934-16 of amendment one to the six year transportation improvement program TIP 2016 through 2021. And this is a second reading, Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you said, uh, this is a second reading for a possible amendment by resolution of, uh, of the six year transportation improvement program. As we discussed last time, uh, this is a more or less a an administrative change but it does require action by the council under the uh, state rules that govern the transportation improvement program uh, what this does is it uh, changes the status of the jameson arterial improvements project from uh, seeking funding to secured funding uh, with the grant of the tip funds that uh, we've discussed earlier in the year so that's the purpose for this, uh, basically administrative, and, and we would ask that you uh, uh, move forward with an adoption of amendment number one to the six year tip. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to But Just kind of a, maybe a clerical uh, issue, uh, Mark. Um, on the computerized, it says 934. On the agenda sheet, it says next resolution 935. Is that because this one has already been designated for that one? Correct. Okay. So it is 935, Patsy? 935. 934, okay. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for adoption of resolution 935-16. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, uh, I'd like to make a motion we adopt resolution 934-16, a resolution amending the six-year transportation improvement program for the city of Cedar Woolley from 2016 through 2021. Okay, and do I have a second? I second that. Get that right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Say aye. Okay, it carries. So we move on to agenda item number six, resolution on proposed urban growth area expansion. This is the first reading, and this will be John. Good evening. So I understand, I realize there's uh, sort of a shortage of council members and the mayor tonight, so I don't want to I don't want to go too much detail, um, but this is just a first read. The Planning Commission has been working f since February of last year, I think maybe March of last year, on updating the, the land use element of the comp plan, and the uh, and, and specifically one part of that is uh, making recommendations for changes to the urban growth area boundaries. Um, the Planning Commission, after several public hearings, open houses, regular meetings, workshops, uh, after direct mailers to property owners and publications, so there's been a lot of a lot of public uh, review of this. Um, they, the Planning Commission has made a recommendation to expand the urban growth area. Um, the map on page, I think it's 80. Nine of your agenda. Yes. Um, oops. Ninety-two of your agenda shows basically what the proposed changes are. And before I get too much into the details of that, I'd like to explain what tonight's, uh, what we're, why I'm bringing this to the to the city council right now. Um, the way this process works is the Planning Commission makes a recommendation. Uh, the City Council then can say they, they like the recommendation and can uh, and recommend that it be approved. 
to the county commissioners. So from here, the, what the council does uh, through this process is only pass a resolution saying they support these changes. It, those changes will not actually take place uh, with the council action uh, at the next read, should the council take action at the next read. What it would actually do is send the recommendation to the county. The county will then take it through their planning commission process and ultimately to their city council and uh, they will look at our proposal, make, you know, double check to make sure that uh, the work that we've done shows that the math is correct. Um, run it through the county process, make sure that it conforms with their county uh, comprehensive plan, and then if they're so willing, they will change the boundaries of the urban growth area. So what is the urban growth area? The urban growth area is the area outside of city limits that may annex into the city should the property owners get together and start an annexation process. Um, once an area is in the urban growth area that does not mean it is part of the city, it only means that it is eligible to be part of the city. Um, it's a big distinction, um, however we do a lot of legwork ahead of time to, to define what the urban growth area is to make sure that um, no lands that are inappropriate for annexation and urban services in the long run are included, uh, therefore making annexation in the future more possible, uh, or more streamlined and uh, better planned. So tonight is a, a resolution in front of the council to say whether or not the council will support expanding the urban growth area by um, roughly, it's on the first page of this agenda. <laughs> yeah, it is. Got to scroll back from the map, excuse me. Um, Expanding the urban growth area by approximately 149 acres of land that would be designated towards residential uses and 6.5 acres of commercial land. Those areas are depicted on the map on page 92. They're all north of town and uh, off of Highway 9 and off of Bassett Road and out to Fredrickson Road. All of the property owners have been contacted, um, given notice to participate in the process, and several of them we have heard from and have had comments back, uh, most of them positive, actually. Um, Another part of this process, another part of this proposal that is a little bit separate, but is uh, actually part of it, uh, in order to meet our projected growth in the future, there is a uh, recommendation to rezone one property in city limits off of Carter, uh, in between Carter Road and Carriage Court. It's a 21 acre farmland right now, no, uh, well pasture land that is within city limits that would be changed to mixed commercial land and is currently adjacent to commercial land on the south but in between residential land on the east and west. That is not something that is going to the county. Uh, we're, we're including that as part of our uh, discussion with them and an explanation of why, uh, how we're meeting our projected population and employment growth over the next 20 years. However, that's an action that the city council can take and that'll be coming to the city council when uh, we finish up our comp plan changes in the next several months. Um, I don't have my agenda with me right now, but uh, I hope to have all of the comp plan changes to the city council in May. So we can have them done by the end of June when the state requires that all our comp plan stuff be done. So this action is just sending a recommendation to the county commissioners in support of our urban growth area expansion. The legislative history and more of the details are in the staff agenda that are included with your packet. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them now or at the next read of this, uh, the February 10th, I believe. Okay, thank you, John. Any questions, council? Office, uh, Councillor Owen and myself just come from the Planning Commission, so we don't have any questions. No. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we'll move on to committee reports. First item, number seven, written reports to council. That would be page number 113 on our agenda, on our packet. And that would be Sergeant Harris. Hi, good evening. Did you all get a chance to look at the year in reports that I sent to Chief Tucker? Uh, do you have any questions on that? Well, I appreciate getting them, though. Yeah, that was very useful. We try to do that annually for both those topics, to, um, so you should see those throughout the next year as well. Um, and then Councilmember Limley had a question earlier. We had some excitement in town where Washington State Patrol was attempting to stop a car on I-5. The car failed to yield and took off at a high rate, resulting in a pursuit that led them into Cedar Woolley. Uh, CJ officers got involved to assist uh, the pursuit kind of headed towards the high school with 3rd Street dividing the high school as students walking back and forth. I closed or put the high school in lockdown just as a precautionary to keep kids off the street. Um, we heard that the suspect was going south on Township thinking he's going to circle around River Road and come up on 3rd. So we wanted to prevent that. Fortunately he didn't. He made a turn down one of the dead end roads on the south end of town. Uh, fled on foot and we chased him down about four or five blocks from there where he was taken into custody. Um, nobody was hurt. Bad guy went to jail and uh, that kind of ended the excitement for today. <laughs> so, Was it a single occupant in the car? It was just one male subject, yeah. Okay. In my understanding, the reason he fled or failed to stop because he said, quote, I don't have a license. So oh. that was his reason for not stopping. Okay. No, he's not going Just rack him up. So, um, that's what I have for you tonight. Okay, thank you, Sergeant Harris. Okay. Chief Clear. I was telling you at uh, the last council meeting about being down uh, on some residents. We've uh, we held our test last week and we're we're back up full on on residents. Uh, we got two brand new people and one that just got home from the Air Force and uh, moved back in for a little while. So it, it's nice to have a full house the first time in I think the last in five months. So it's it's, it's be good to have full crews again. So thank you, John. Planning Commission is just full steam ahead on comprehensive plan updates uh, on different elements of the comp plan besides what we've been talking about tonight. Um, so we've got a work plan with them going forward and that's it's all seems to be on pace to, to be done on time and by June 30th. Sounds good. Thank you. Mark? Thank you. Um, not too much new to report tonight, uh, other than you'll be getting a notice, and we'll post this on the website. Uh, tomorrow is our intention uh, for the second uh, public open house for the uh, Jamison Arterial Extension Project. Uh, when we met uh, several months ago, we uh, told the uh, attendees that we would have a second meeting, and this is this is the one uh, that was uh, proffered at that time. We've got that scheduled tentatively for the 10th of of February. That would be from 5 to 6 on council meeting night to give you the opportunity to attend uh, if you choose to do that. Um, and uh, we expect there will probably be a pretty good turnout. There was the last time. We've also uh, scheduled a meeting for uh, March the 24th on a Thursday night uh, from 6 to 7 uh, for the folks uh, that live in the vicinity of Hauser Playfields. As you're aware, we've been redeveloping uh, that property uh, west of Rhodes Road, um, south of the railroad, uh, as a playfield area, uh, mostly soccer at this point. And uh, we had some concerns expressed by the residents of Sunic uh, Drive there. Uh, which is actually in the county, but they're directly uh, neighboring that property on two sides. Uh, so we'll invite uh, all of those residents, and we'll also invite anyone within you know 500 feet or so of that, and we'll have it published in the paper and uh, also on the website. So those those are coming up. Just wanted you to be aware of those. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Patsy. Um, with the council's passage of the or approval of the final 2015 bills, we'll be working on wrapping up um, the last year and annual reports and all of those fun things. Sounds fun. <laughs> Judith. I would just like to uh, tell the council that because of previous commitments, I will not be at the next two meetings. Okay. 
That's the workshop and the tenth. Okay. Is that all? Yep. Okay. Chuck. No, I don't have anything. Okay, Rick. Oh, ma'am. All right, then. I will now entertain a motion for I move that okay. we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You can talk with these Thank people you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. We can